everyone, this is Joanne and welcome to a new video. In this episode, I'm going to share my little upcycling adventure. So here I found my husband's old jacket. This is a mid-weight waterproof type of jacket. The zipper is broken, but the fabric itself is in the good condition and I can tell that it is a good quality material. So I thought rather than tossing this jacket to the garbage, why not extract the fabric and turn it into a little purse? What I had in mind initially was pretty straightforward. I wanted to use the Sally crossbody bag pattern to make the purse out of this jacket. So if you remember the Sally crossbody bag project, many of you really enjoy that. You can check the tutorial somewhere here. I'll put the link. However, since I see that there is quite a bit of fabric here that I can use since this is an extra large men's jacket, I decided to alter the the pattern to make it bigger simplify the zipper installation by using the nylon coil zipper and leave out the card pockets and i am very happy with the finished product this bag measures about 10 and a half inch wide 11 and a half inch tall and two inches deep at the bottom i love all the features i love that this bag is lightweight but sturdy and of course water resistance since i use the waterproof jacket material in the interior there is a zipper pocket which i extracted from the jacket's pocket and and two sleep pockets. So guys, if you have any old jacket laying around, you can try this project. The one type of jacket that I don't recommend is the puffer type of jacket because it's quilted and there's so much padding material. So it's not going to be very suitable for this project. You may follow my measurements. I have the PDF cutting chart that you can download at yoansewingstudio.com. It's free. I will put the link in the description box down below. Or you can use this video as a guide and make your own adaptation. So you your call. I hope you enjoyed this video and without further ado, let's jump straight into it. First thing first, you want to examine your jacket and see which way is the best for you to cut the fabric to make the most out of the material. I happen to also like the fabric of the jacket lining, so I'm going to use this for the purse lining. I also plan on using one of the zipper pocket here for the interior pocket. Start cutting the exterior of the jacket. Use a pair of uh, fabric scissors. Try to get as big of a panel as possible to allow plenty of room for you to cut according to the measurements. Now I want to cut the lining of the jacket for the interior of my bag. And don't forget about the sleeves, guys. There's plenty of material here too. This is great for making the adjustable strap. Alright guys, once you've done with the initial cutting, if the fabric is somewhat wrinkly, you can go to your ironing board and iron the fabric real quick. Make sure to do a little bit of testing just to see which heat setting is appropriate for your fabric. Now let's cut all the panels according to the measurement chart. Now let's work on the front exterior. So here I've got the upper, middle and lower panel from which we're going to attach the zipper pockets. These are the upper and lower zipper pocket panels. I purposely made the measurements identical to avoid too much confusion. Now let's prepare the zipper. I use nylon coil zipper by the yard here. So the zipper should be at least 9 inches long and the width is 1 and a quarter inch. Stitch back and forth at the start of the zipper tape. Also at the end, if you use the zipper by the yard so that you won't accidentally lose the zipper pull. Lay the lower front panel with the right side facing up. Stick a basting tape along the top edges. Now take the zipper and lay that right side down. You can either have the zipper pull at your left hand side or right hand side. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure it is consistent for all the zippers. Now apply another basting tape along the edges of the zipper there. Take the lower pocket panel and lay that right side down. Make sure to match the sides and the top edges. Once everything is secured, stitch this in place with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Flip this to the right side. Press the seams, both the exterior and the lining. You can either finger press or press with an iron on low setting. Just be mindful with the zipper teeth if you choose the latter option. And then top stitch. Take the middle panel with the right side facing up. If your fabric has directional print, you want to flip this upside down. Now stick a basting tape along the edges there. Now take the zipper and lay that right side down. Make sure to align the side edges and of course match the edges of the zipper tape with the edges of the middle panel. 
Now bring the bottom edge of the pocket panel towards the edges of the zipper tape. Finger press to secure the fabric layers, making sure that everything is aligned, and then stitch this in place. Flip the middle panel towards the top, finger press, and then top stitch. Stick a basting tape along the top edges of the middle panel. Now take the second zipper and then lay that right side down. Apply basting tape along the edges of the zipper. Take the upper pocket panel and lay that right side down. Again, make sure to match the side and the top edges. And then stitch with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once you've done that, flip this to the right side, press the seams, and then top stitch. All right, now let's lay the upper panel with the right side facing up. And just like before, if you happen to use fabric with directional print, you want to flip this upside down so that we're working with the bottom edge. Let's apply some basting tape. Lay the zipper panel with the right side facing down. Again, guys, pay attention to the side edges of your fabrics. Make sure that they're all aligned. Apply some basting tape along the edges of the zipper there. Bring the bottom edge of the upper zipper pocket panel towards the top. Of course, matching all the edges. And once everything is secured, stitch this in place with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Flip the upper panel towards the top and then press and then top stitch. Once you've done top stitching, let's trim off the excess zipper and then base stitch along the side edges to hold the pocket panels in place. Next, we're going to attach the side panels. So let's lay these right sides together and then stitch with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now press this towards the side panel. You can just finger press or you can use iron on low setting, but just be very careful with the zipper teeth. And then top stitch. Now let's repeat to sew the remaining side panel to the opposite side. Next, we're going to work on the ring tab. So you want to cut two little rectangles. And as usual, we're going to do the folding and pressing method. First, we're going to fold this in half widthwise and then press and then fold the edges towards the center fold and then press. Now fold this in half again and press. My fabric doesn't want to keep folded here. So I'm just going to use a sewing clip to temporarily secure the folds. Now stitch the long edges with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance starting from the open edge. Now attach the D-ring to the ring tab just like that. Position that on the right side of the upper back exterior panel about one inch away from the side edge. Match the row edges of the ring tab with the bottom edge of the upper back panel. Secure with a sewing clip and then repeat to attach the remaining ring tab to the opposite side. Stitch to secure this with quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now we're going to join the upper and lower back exterior panel. Lay them right sides together and then stitch with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once you've done that, you want to press the seams towards the lower panel. So the ring tab should be sitting on the upper side. And then press, be mindful with the hot wires of course. And then top stitch. I use the sleeve panel to extract some strips for my adjustable strap. First, I strain up this edge and then cut some 4 inches strips. Since I want to make my strap to be 1 inch wide. And then join these strips together until I get sufficient length, which is between 50 and 55 inch. I like joining my strips on bias. So first I cross the strips with a little bit of overhang on both ends. And then draw a diagonal line from one corner to the opposite corner, just like so. And then pin and then stitch right on this uh, diagonal line. Trim the seam allowances down to about quarter of an inch. And then you can trim the excess fabric at the corners. And then press the seams open. I made the strap with the usual folding and pressing method. And then attach the hardwares. So if you need the tutorial on how to attach these hardwares, I will link a separate video. You can check that out somewhere in the video description. To make the slip pocket, you want to fold the slip pocket panel in half with wise, just like so. And then stitch along the top edges with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once you've done that, press the seams open, turn the pocket right side out, press it again, and then top stitch along the top edges. 
Fold the pocket panel in half with wise and then press to get the center fold crease. Position the pocket on the right side of the back interior panel, about two and a half inch from the top edge. Pin them in place and then stitch the sides and the bottom with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Then you wanna stitch on the center fold line there to divide the pocket into two. And there you have it. Here I've cut one of the zipper pocket from the jacket and I'm gonna use this for my front interior. We want this panel to measure 11 and a half inch by 11 inch. So if you can extract the fabric to that measurements, it will be perfect. Otherwise, if yours turn out to be smaller, just like mine here, you can just sew extra panels to get to the required measurements. So here I've sewn two panels, one at the bottom and one at the side of my zipper pocket. The pocket fabric is sticking out a little bit at the bottom here, so I'm just gonna trim this off and then stitch the bottom. And there you go, my back interior is done and ready to go. For the bottom panel, you wanna cut two rectangles, one for the exterior and one for the interior. If you want to, you can fuse a stabilizer, either for the exterior or interior. I decided not to add any stabilizer to mine because I'm pretty happy with the weight of my fabric. With the front exterior facing right side up, you wanna lay the bottom panel right side down, match it with the bottom edge of the front exterior, and then stitch this in place with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Press the seams and then top stitch. Stitch the bottom interior panel to the front interior panel, but this time you wanna use a slight larger seam allowance, which is half an inch seam allowance. Once you've done that, you wanna press the seams and you don't really have to top stitch this. Now it's time to assemble the bag. So we're gonna do a straightforward zipper installation here. Here I've got the front exterior facing right side up. Let's apply a basting tape along the top edges there. Lay the zipper right side down. Make sure to match all the edges there. Apply a basting tape along the edges of the zipper tape and then take the front interior panel and lay that right side down. Again, make sure to match the side and the top edges and then stitch with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once you've done that, you wanna flip this to the right side, press the seams, both the exterior and the interior and then top stitch. All right guys, now we're gonna attach the back side of the bag to the opposite zipper tape. So we're gonna do the same zipper sandwich, starting with the back exterior right side up Make sure to slide the D-rings down so that they will be out of the way from the seam allowances. And then the zipper right side down and then the back interior right side down. Again, make sure to match the side and the top edges and then stitch, flip to the right side, press the seams and then top stitch. Unzip the zipper at least halfway and then separate the exterior from the interior. So the right sides should be facing each other at this point. Next, we're gonna stitch the bottom panel here to the back exterior. Lay them right sides together, just like that, matching the edges, of course, and then stitch this in place with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So you should end up with something like this. Now you can press the seams, and then if you want to, you can top stitch this, gently flip this to the right side, just the bottom part, and then give this a top stitch. I didn't top stitch mine. It slipped my mind for some reasons. Next, we're gonna stitch the bottom panel of the interior to the back interior panel. So you wanna do this the same with the exterior. However, for the interior, you wanna again use half an inch seam allowance and leave about four inches of opening at the bottom to turn the bag inside out later. Next, we're gonna pin the sides of the bag. So let's start from the zipper area. Match the top stitching line of the exterior here. At this point, it is very important that the zipper teeth are sitting on the interior side, okay? Now let's pin and then continue pinning. As you get to the bottom, you wanna match the seams of the bottom panel and then repeat the same to the opposite side. I want to mention this again guys, just make sure that your zipper teeth at this point is sitting in the interior side. Pin the back interior pretty much the same way and then stitch one side at a time starting from the exterior side. So we're gonna start from the exterior side with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and then pass the zipper. As you get to the interior side, you wanna gradually increase the seam allowances to half an inch. This way the fabric will sit snugly inside the bag. 
Now let's trim off any excess zipper and then trim the seam allowances down to about quarter of an inch. To create a little bit of depth to this bag, you want to open the bottom corner so it will look like a little triangle. Make sure that the seam line is centered. You want to lay that flat, measure one inch from the corner and then draw a straight line there and then stitch on that line. So you want to work the same for all the corners including the lining as well and then trim the seam allowances down to a quarter of an inch. Turn the bag right side out through the opening. Knit on the zipper and the bottom corners. Pull the lining out and then find the opening hole. Fold the row edges towards the wrong side about half an inch and then stitch along the edges to close the opening. Once you've done that, you can place the lining back inside, attach the strap, and voila, your bag is done. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and until next time, goodbye.